Hello everybody, I'm Tim Carbone. Uh, I'm here at the Silo Recording Studios in Denver, Colorado, and I'm producing the new record for uh, the excellent band, 10th Mountain Division. This album is the most professional pursuit of an album we've ever done before. First album, we we got the studio time because we won a Battle of the Bands, and we were also a bunch of punk-ass college kids. So I was like, yeah, sure, let's make an album. When we put out our first album in 2016, Cracks in the Sky, it was called, I, I mean, I'd never been in a band before, I never put out an album, I just like didn't really know much, you know? So when, I, when we put that out, I was like, like, here's the top and we're here. I was like, how can we get any better? I was like, that was so cool, we put out an album. You know, it was like that little kid dream, like, we put out an album. With TMD, we started, I was started recording them in like when we were in college and we just weren't good at it. Like we would, like we weren't good at metronome. We weren't, you know, we were kind of green to the whole process. And now that we've done it a few times, two, two times I should say, we've just gotten better at it. So when you're better at things like that and you don't make as many mistakes, then you're, then you can have more fun. I feel like it's, not that it was the last one was forced, you know, it was just like we kind of worked with what we had and this one is like where we're able to like whittle down to like the, the finer, you know, the exactly what we want, you know. I think the arrangements are more complex. I think the lyrics are more heartfelt and personal. Um, and it's interesting because uh, some of the songs were written like, you know, upwards of five years ago, some of Andrew's old stuff and all the way up to um, this song, Girl Like You, one of mine, I kind of like finished for the studio and we never played it live. So um, getting to explore both of those kind of things make it exciting. I think our songwriting has matured. We can more intricate parts. We can tell a better story, not just lyrically, but thematically and everything like that. The level of production and seriousness behind this project will allow the quality of these songs to be a lot stronger and will allow us to convey that unique voice that that specific songwriter or lead has. So you, in this, we're going to hear a lot of really sad MJ songs, but they're brilliant and they're bittersweet and heartbroken, but just awesome. Uh, Cooney is... A, putting out so many songs that sound like Tadeshi Trucks and stuff and it's just thick and has this like coony badassness with it. Every single one is just a bit more than what we would have done in the past. This, this album is cool because I really didn't know we were capable of making such like cool sounds and songs and stuff. We've just come a long way from our inception and uh, Having a producer for the very first time, not you know, not having to bicker with each other over, I think this will sound better, this will sound better, but just having a definitive answer, um, it's made it a lot easier to like get creative outlets out there and and <clears throat> just not waste any time. We've been talking it up, and now we got to do it. You know, it's the it's, that's what it is. We've been saying like we're gonna record this record, we're gonna do this, and we've kind of put the pressure on ourselves in a good way where we're like, oh, we need this to be a good record. You know, we need this to be an awesome album for people to listen to and make it worth their donation, their time, and their patience. You know, so the pressure's on, but I think we're, I think it's a, it's a good challenge. You know, you should always have a challenge for yourself, but I think this is a good one for us to have right now. Silo is the best. Like, there's no, we've done a lot of studios in Colorado, and for the proximity to Denver, first of all, the gear they have, and not only the gear, but the personnel. Like, Todd Duvall is the, is the man. Like, he has such a knowledge of all the gear he has. He knows the room so well. You just come in and you're in, like, just a master's hands. And especially how, with working with Tim, he silos his home studio here in Denver, so he knows the room super well. So you're just coming in with so much knowledge behind you, and you know, you bring if you bring good songs, they're gonna sound great. There's only one good answer for that. It's the best. <laughs> it's the best. It's the best recording studio I've ever been in. I mean, 
Todd is a wizard, Todd Dival. He's the owner of Silo Studio. Um, you should, like one of my favorite parts of the day is when we turn off, we're like, all right, we're done for the day. And they just sit there and revel in like the coolest music history you've ever heard. Like Todd got punched in the face by the lead singer of the Sex Pistols, he was telling us. And he was like, he went down to the ground and got back up and was like, that was the coolest moment of my life. <laughs> like, I don't know, he just has all these insane stories. Like he's just been around the block and he's worked with everyone. Like hardworking Americans, contribution. I don't know all these guys, but man, there's some really good drunken hearts. There's some really good albums here. Um, and on top of that, it's the only studio Tim Carbone works in in Colorado. So <laughs> that made the choice easier for us. <laughs> it sounds real, you know, like, uh, just like listening to other bands, stuff that came out from the studio, I just felt like that was the, on par with what my favorite albums sound like. I love it. I, I, I always enjoyed being in the studio, but having Tim here, and Tim and Todd, they're kind of, you know, two peas in a pod a little bit. Um, having them too, they, they are very, very honest, and they are also kind of assholes, and it's and actually, it's an amazing, wonderful having them there because they just knock out all the bullshit out of the way and any problems that arise they say it straight to your face and you figure it out and you get the song done like this album is is for our fans you know we raised forty thousand dollars to do this th through kickstarter and we just like couldn't be more appreciative of our fans for giving us this opportunity to not only record another album but to do so with like the best production quality and engineers that you possibly could. We always hear the song in the, either a live setting or in a rehearsal space or anything like that. And so to actually hear it come out on like the recording, like to hear it in that realm and to hear that, it's really cool. Like 9 to 5 for instance, I, hear it, I heard it so different in my head, but then when I finally hear the final product, I was like, oh, this is a really cool kind of existence for this song now. And I think having that happen for every song is really cool. I really love it. My favorite track on this record uh, that came really out of left field is Burning Heart, uh, Winston's song. It's a tribute song to the late, great Jeff Austin, and uh, it's really tragic but beautiful, and I think it was really a brave thing for him to share, and here in the studio, it's really come from a song that was uh, maybe not even finished yet to something that is really gonna blow people's minds and I'm excited to see what they think because I really like it. <laughs> COVID-19 and quarantine has obviously done so, like so many horrible things to so many people and so many terrible health concerns but it's also allowed us a lot of time and freedom to write and uh, you know get a little more creative and I would six months ago I think we had about eight songs that we knew were going on this album 100% and after quarantine which we were supposed to be done recording this album already but you know with all the health scares we had to postpone it and when we came back and we're ready to get back in the studio like we are now, we have like 21 songs. In a way, it's kind of been like a blessing in disguise, you know, with less distraction from like preparing for shows and we're just like, just straight up head in the ground on the, on the album. Um, been able to just, you know, really, really work things out and fine tune everything before we got in here. It gave us a pause which let us recharge a little bit because we had been moving fast and playing a lot, and I think a big thing is I've noticed this a lot with us is if we take a break, and if we take a break and we come back, we always sound a lot better. And I think with that and 
having songs written and people like ready to play new songs and they're wanting to do it and not being able to and finally having the chance to play together really made it an awesome experience. My favorite part about this album is it's gonna be so fresh. It's not songs that we've been playing on the road for a year and that our fans have heard. It's like a lot of it is really, really new and fresh and it's exciting for us. Winston and MJ were, you know, these jam head bluegrass kids, and they bring in that element. Tyler was playing, you know, all kinds of rock and punk and is a very heavy player and brings that element into it. Cooney is much more of like an R&B kind of guy, and then of course I have my history with blues and jazz, and so you have five different genres amalgamating into this melting pot of a group of friends that have been playing music together for seven years. It's like allowing us to expand out of our like previous box that we like kind of have been placed in, you know, on our own and by like people who come and see us and whatever, like people will kind of put us in the bluegrass thing. And it's like, it's not, we're not a bluegrass band, you know, like there's, we have a mandolin, but like there's no, there's no like, we're not playing, granted there's one song that's kind of like a fiddle tune, but besides the point, like we're playing like, soul songs, we're playing instrumental, like, epic songs, we're playing, like, Pink Floyd style, like, you know, rock and roll, and it's really, like, we're allowing ourselves to not be confined by what has been expected in the past. We are going to have a bluegrass tune, a country tune, a jazz tune, a jam tune. It's, we're painting the whole rainbow, the whole spectrum is going to be there, and it's going to be dope. I feel like this is like a rock record, you know, it's, uh, it does have its flavors in, mixed in, but I feel like we're making a rock and roll record. That's, you know, something I've always wanted to do, being a rock star, you know. I like their sound, they're good guys too, and uh, the, what I like about their sound is that they're not, you know, at first I was like, oh, I mean, I, I, I look at them before I heard them and I was like, okay, these guys, I guess they're just another Colorado jam band. But they're not. They're kind of a sort of a pop rock band. They're they're sort of like, or I don't even know. I mean, they're like, you know, Led Zeppelin, not Led Zeppelin, but uh, Pink Floyd meets Elton John, you know, with a mandolin player. Uh, and you know, it's uh, it's yeah, they're very unique and they have good songs and they're they're you know they're good good singers and we made a good record. I think this record is going to be exemplary of 10th Mountain Division in the fact that it is as eclectic and indescribable as we have been with any time somebody asks us what style of music do we do because we started as a bluegrass band, we have a mandolin, it always gets flumped into that, we jam, so we get the jam band thing, but these songs are kind of typically clocking in from like three and a half minutes to five minutes and a lot of them aren't necessarily uh, bluegrass jam or rock they're kind of uh, amalgams uh, so to speak and I think um, you'll have to get back to us because we call it ski rock I call it 10th mountain music I don't know I think we are really getting at something with a sound of our own but um, I, don't, I wouldn't call it anything <laughs> This is kind of a funny story. I met Tim Carbone at Yarmini Grass Music Festival 
and I kind of like barged into his, uh, his little cabin. <laughs> I met Tim Carbone in the school bus um, at Yarmini Festival, uh, drinking gin and mate. <laughs> We went and hung out on the bus. I like left and then I came back and it was just a, almost like four completely different people were on the bus at that point, you know, they'd been partying and drinking and stuff. Maybe don't put that in. But the, um... uh, well, I met them at Yarmany Grass. Uh, they invited me on their bus and plied me with cheap vodka. And I, I drank a, a lot of vodka with them and they, they drank a lot of vodka and so we had a good kind of Yarmany time, you know, and then we, uh, I believe after that we went out and looked at 10 billion stars until we just couldn't stand to look up anymore. And then that, that fall and winter, which was just this most recent fall and winter, we took, went to Kickstarter, raised the money, and here we are doing a full album with them. So it all started out with a bottle of gin at Yarmany Grass. <laughs> Feeling lighter than air, like the leaves on a breeze. Now you're a ghost, you got me down here on my knees. I guess I got to We just want to show them that we're working our asses off. We're really putting in the hard work. We're writing the best songs we've ever written. And working in this amazing recording studio with Tim Carbone, our producer, it's just, it's been a really, uh, really cool experience and it's, it's, we've learned a lot from it. And obviously the Kickstarter was a huge part of like making this possible. And it was just like unbelievable to experience that much support, you know, like 400 different people, which was probably, you know, some couples. So like, if you think about it, it's probably almost twice that, like felt compelled to support what we do. And like, they believed in that. and. That's really like the biggest inspiration you can have is just like people believing in you. And I just can't wait to share like our hard work with the people that believe in us. We literally would not be in this room right now if it wasn't for them with our Kickstarter and everything like that. So that's something I can never thank them enough for. And um, you know, just even the people who put us up and let us stay at their houses and have on this crazy journey have gotten us this far, you know, it's. It, it, it's cliche, but it's not. We really couldn't have done it without any anyone who helped us. And you know, I'm just excited for the road ahead and what we can bring back and give back to people in shows or anything else we have coming up. So, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you is what I'm going for. I guess I just couldn't fight it. I guess I got to it. I guess I got to it. I guess I got to excited. So